What's up, DC? Woo! Wrong crowd, sorry. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the dinner and our halal meat. A semi-naked uh, belly dancer will follow shortly. <laughs> traditions, traditions. Um, I would like to apologize for my uh, tuxless appearance. I was here in town uh, being invited from Cairo to talk about my show in the Global Philanthropy Forum. And I was uh, invited here last minute, so I never say no for a free dinner. So thank you very much for having me. Um, so if I would have known, I still wouldn't have got a tuxedo because it's so expensive. Um, I'm honored to present uh, this award to Muslims are coming comedy tour. In 2011, uh, Negin Farsad and Dean Obidallah launched the Muslims are coming comedy tour, making its way from the deep south through the Midwest. The tour stopped in small towns and at college campuses, performing free shows and engaging locals in discussions about pop culture, social issues, and Islamophobia. While on the road, the tour, uh, the tour was filmed for of a documentary which the comedians hope will help counter anti-Muslim sentiment. The Muslim are coming was a brilliant strategy for addressing the ethnic discrimination and Islamophobia through comedy, satire, sarcasm, and uh, I'm sorry, I can't say this. They have written this for me. I can't. Uh, I mean, you know what these guys actually have done? They have taken our most important weapon, fear, like scary stereotypes. Now everybody are like laughing at their tour. This was our biggest weapon ever. I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, who said that I wanted the stereotypes to go away? I wanted people to fear me. I mean, for years, American would hear the Muslims are coming and would think like a hatred feel and ah! Now, like, I mean, that would, they, they would immediately think of long beards, angry faces, evil laughs, sinister accents filled with <laughs> They would hear a voice echoing in their heads, die you infidel so I can get my 72 versions. Death to America. The phrase, the Muslims are coming, was, was so scary that even they couldn't make fun of the punt coming. They can't. It's, it was so scary. So, I mean, but now that was in the past. With these people coming up, now you, like, they s listen to the Muslims are coming and they are entertained. Entertained, you know? Hatred, entertainment. Fear, comedy. So, I mean, you have... They have disarmed us forever, and now people cannot believe anything they can see on Fox News anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, this is what they have written for me, that these people are here to receive an award for, check this out, <clears throat> for using comedy to break down cultural barriers and for the efforts to dispel misconceptions about Muslims and Arabs throughout the country. False. Those guys hurt our image as hate-mongering, virgin-hunting, suicide-bombing, camera-riding ragheads. We wanted people to fear us. Instead, now there is a chance they would view us as like humans. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, on behalf of all of you, may I present this award. May we all burn in hell. But first, uh, we have a video to watch. Do we have a video to watch? Yes. Fear mongering video. Thank you. The Muslims Are Coming, a tongue-in-cheek comedy title for a comedy tour where Muslim Americans use humor to fight Islamophobia. It's to sort of introduce people around the country who have never met a Muslim um, to some Muslims. The comedy tour headed to the American heartland and deep south and did free shows in towns where Islamophobia has been a problem. Is there really anything funny about being a Muslim in America these days? And it could be more challenging for us. It, they could give hurricanes Muslim names. That wouldn't help. Oh, my God, I didn't realize there were so many countries in the Middle East. <laughs> I thought it was just one big brown violet blob. <laughs> I didn't. Next thing you know, they're, they're going to say there's different cultures and languages, which is just shut up. That's crazy. Impressed by what they saw throughout the comedy tour, Nagin Fassad and Dean Obaidallah turned it into this new film under the same name. 
People don't notice minorities usually until either uh, one of them has a hit song or does something horrible. Well, how do you feel about 9-11? Today is the day a live Muslim is here to answer your questions. Now, they're taking their act east at the Amman Stand-Up Comedy Festival. And Arab audiences loved it. I laughed more than I have in the past year. I had so much fun. My brother is from laughing. <laughs> I laughed so hard. It's just amazing. I can't wait for next year. We have Batman in the States and Superman. There's no Arab superhero yet. And I want there to be, but there's a reason we can't have one. It's because you'd be 20 minutes late for every emergency. <laughs> that stand-up comedian, Dean Obidala, at the first comedy festival held in the Middle East. Obidala was the executive producer of the Amman Festival held in Jordan this month. The Arab-American on the team, Dean, has for years brilliantly used comedy to combat stereotypes that otherize Arab-Americans and American Muslims. He's also become a regular there political are, commentator on CNN and CNN.com. For the last two and a half years, I think we've been in a political comedy recession when it deals with presidential politics. Through their use of laughter to break down cultural barriers and humanize ethnic and religious minorities, Nagin and Dean are laying the groundwork for dialogues that celebrate our commonalities rather than exploiting our differences. And for that, we are proud to honour them at the Khalil Gibran Spirit of Humanity Awards Gala. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Nagin and my personal hero from Axis of Evil. I have seen every single one of Axis of Evil. You're amazing, guys. Thank you. Thank you. How about a round of applause for... He's a doctor. Can you believe this? What kind of doctor are you? Thanks, Chevron, for uh, sponsoring the thing. Is now we know where our oil goes, like your plates. Thank you guys very, very much. I get to speak first tonight. First of all, could we have a round of applause for AI, Jim Zogby, and everyone involved in that organization. And all the work they do, it's tireless. Um, you know, it's, I'm honored, and we are certainly honored to be here. We did a tour. The documentary hasn't come out yet, and you're honoring it in advance, and I'm hoping it doesn't suck, the movie, because <laughs> we have to give the award back, I think. So uh, it's also exciting and thrilling to share the stage tonight with so many great people, including Congressman Ellison and Southern Poverty Law Center, which are both in our movie. Mark Potok of SPLC and Congressman Ellison's in our movie, and so is John Stewart, Rachel Maddow, Soledad O'Brien, a list of people. Uh, you know, I think that, for me, th when you see the title, The Muslims Are Coming, it make you think it, the movie's about Muslims. It is on some level, but to me, it's not really about Muslims. The same way AI is not really about being Arab. It's about America. That's what this is about for us. It, I think both the movie and AI have a similar, similar goal. I mean, the idea is, what vision do you see for our country? One where people of a certain faith or ethnicity are, are marginalized, harassed, or demonized, or one where we all have the same rights, the same way to practice our faith, to live our lives at the same opportunity, regardless of your background. And that's so much what inspires us to do this project and do this movie. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting. Nagin will tell you, her, her name is Nagin Farsad, which there were Arabs here before they had the show making me phonetically pronounce your name. Despite the difficult Arab names we have, Nagin Farsad scared her, so it scared them a bit. But I, I want to thank you guys very much. This is, this is almost as nice as the GSA event I was at recently. <laughs> that was a little nicer. And I'm performing for the Secret Service next week. I can't wait to that one. <laughs> That'll be the best one. Now it gives me a great pleasure to introduce my, my co-director who works tirelessly. I might work a lot, but she works much harder than I do. Please welcome Nagin Farsad. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, I just, um, I'm an Iranian-American Muslim female. Where are my Iranian-American Muslim females at? Yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, and I just, I, I, um, I want to point out to, uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much to the Arab American Institute um, for giving an award to, to a, 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 a joint effort here between the Arabs and the Persians who haven't historically gotten along. Um, 
And so this is, I think, the beginning of something new. And uh, and uh, and and I, th the movie itself as well, is really an effort at uh, engaging this kind of pan Middle Eastern, pan Muslim diaspora population here in the United States. It was important for us to have Muslims in the movie, like Keith Ellison, a black Muslim, like Imam Shamsa Ali, a Southeast Asian Muslim, um, like uh, Preacher Moss, like uh, Mason Zai. These are all people from the from Arab countries, from Iran, um, from from Southeast Asia, from the United States and uh, so these are so this is um, what we're trying to do and I feel like it's awesome that the Arab American Institute is like helping uh, uh, further that Arab Persian fusion um, <laughs> That sounded sexual it, for a minute there. It was a, I didn't mean it to be so dirty. Um, but I, and I also have to say, um, on a personal level, uh, this is like a coup for me because I'm a comedian. Um, and so for me to be able to share a stage with the SPLC, with the Arab Thought Foundation, with, uh, with uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Kutuf, uh, is, is such an honor and will probably never happen again in my life um, because I specialize in dick and fart jokes. So for me to be up here with those guys is just... Outray I mean, I'm going to write this down in my diary that I keep. Um, and so I really wanted to, and I think, uh, but, but in all seriousness, the, this, is, this is such a beautiful event, a beautiful event, and um, uh, Khalil Gibran himself would be so, I think, amazed by the people who are being rewarded tonight. And I think he would have really loved um, the saffron uh, mashed potatoes in particular. So really fantastic. Well done on that. Um, over everything. Well done on that over everything. Uh, thank you so much. And I just have to say, uh, Dean was too polite to mention to you guys, we are actually in the middle of a little fundraising campaign on a little thing called Kickstarter, for those of you who don't know. Uh, it's where you you you, pl you make a pledge, like you say, I'm going to try and raise $40,000, which is our goal, um, in 40 days, which is we made it Muslim. And uh, and, um, and then you pledge, and if we raise that money within 40 days, we get that money. Um, this, this, this campaign, this fundraising campaign, gives us a daily heart attack. Uh, and we, um, we're, we would, if, if here's, now what I'm saying, what we're offering to you guys is that we're not begging up here, we're offering a public service. And the public service is, if you are loaded down with cash in your pockets, okay? If you're just so stuffed with money that you don't know what to do with yourself, I have a place where you can take it. And that is to the Muslims are coming uh, Kickstarter campaign. So that is just the, the brash little uh, pitch for money. But otherwise, you guys are delightful, wonderful, and thank you so much to the Arab American Institute. Thank you. Thanks.